quote from Dr. Carl Sagan, Voyager 1 and 2 are ambassadors for humanity, traveling into the infinity of space to show that we can reach for the stars. Two NASA probes are the first man-made objects to reach for the stars. Voyager 1 suddenly received an alarming response from a nearby object in space, and we may have made contact with an alien force. The Voyager probes are the most distant objects ever flown and will be humanity's first ambassadors to reach alien worlds. Dr. Carl Sagan was an outstanding astronomer, cosmologist, and visionary, and he had a dream to find extraterrestrial life. Sagan was a pioneer in the field of exobiology. He was fascinated that life could exist beyond our Earth, and he believed that one day, mankind would fly into space to explore it and meet other species. Voyager 1 and 2 were the first messengers of this mission for Sagan. At the end of the 1970s, these two space pioneers set off on their journey. Some scientists did not believe in the overwhelming success of the probes. They only hoped that the two voyagers would reach their primary destinations of Jupiter and Saturn in one piece. But some, like Dr. Sagan, believed that these probes would fly further and further and thus become the first interstellar ambassadors of mankind. The visionaries who believed that the Voyager probes would one day reach alien worlds equipped the probes with two golden disks containing representative messages from all of humanity. It was Sagan's heartfelt wish that these probes would one day end up in the hands of alien beings. Just as we would immediately capture and examine an alien flying object that appeared in our solar system, so it might happen to other beings somewhere in the galaxy with the Voyager probes we had built at some point many thousands of years from now. But perhaps we won't have to wait that long. It's possible that Voyager 1 has already found the trace of an alien intelligence in space. Just beyond the end of the solar system, something appeared that looks like the answer of a nearby object. Are we looking at billions of alien worlds? A quote from Neil deGrasse Tyson. The Voyager missions remind us that there is so much more to discover that every star in the sky could be a world waiting to be discovered. Given the vast size of the universe, can you imagine that we really are the only living beings? Probably not. Even if we have not yet found any traces of other life forms, they are certainly there. Just as Carl Sagan was convinced of the success of the Voyager missions, astronomers and scientists of today still believe in the great success of the probes. Neil deGrasse Tyson reminds us that we may be looking at thousands or millions of alien worlds every night, but we don't know it. In the 1960s and 70s, exobiologist Carl Sagan intensively researched the atmospheres of various planets and moons in the solar system. He was looking for signs and conditions that could be conducive to extraterrestrial life and hoped that the Voyager probes would provide further insights. As they flew by Jupiter and Saturn, they discovered a whole series of new moons, and some of these moons are now the hottest candidates for finding life in space. Sagan famously said, that we are all just stardust. Our bodies and our world were formed from the remains of exploded stars. In our solar system, these elements mixed in a special way. Some coincidences were added and life emerged. If life was formed here from these elements and dozens of coincidences, then this is also the case in other worlds. It's just that the universe is huge and our ability to make contact and explore other worlds is still in its infancy. We are a small blue dot. The famous photo of Earth, taken by Voyager 1 from a distance of around 6 billion kilometers, is considered one of the best in the history of space travel. Our Earth, which is huge and everything to us, shrinks to a small, blue, pale dot, even in the enormous dimensions of our own solar system. Can you imagine how many such or similar worlds there are in a cosmos with billions of galaxies and countless stars and planets? Researchers have calculated that there must be at least 36 worlds in the cosmos that we can see that have similar conditions for the development of life as we do. Somewhere in the gigantic dimensions of the cosmos, there are probably 36 more Earths hiding. Given the size of the spaces and the immense distances involved, it is clear that the search is like looking for a needle in a haystack. Nevertheless, we have a good chance, and to really know what is out there in the cosmos, we need to know what is in the interstellar medium, the space that fills the vast spaces between the stars and star systems. The Voyager probes were the first to cross this magical threshold a few years ago. And this is where the shock happened. Voyager 1 
flew into a wall and then encountered an unknown force at the edge of the solar system. A quote from Stephen Hawking. We are just about to cross the boundaries of our solar system. Voyager 1 and 2 have shown us how far we can go. The Voyager 1 spacecraft reaching the heliopause in 2012 was a historic moment in space history. The heliopause marks the outer edge of the heliosphere, the space that is influenced and protected by our sun. At this threshold, the sun's influence ends and interstellar space begins. Crossing this boundary was a first. In addition to being a scientific breakthrough, Voyager 1's flight beyond the boundary of the solar system was a symbolic step into the unknown vastness of the universe. It's obvious that scientists had great expectations of the data that Voyager 1 would deliver as it crossed the heliopause. They hoped to finally gain new insights into the structure of the heliopause, understand the interactions between the solar wind and interstellar matter, and thus gain a better understanding of the dynamics of our solar system. The next adventure was immediately followed by research into the nature of the interstellar space. For scientists, this data is like winning the lottery. And since the Voyager probes entered the interstellar medium, observing these scientific devices has been like exploring a long-desired foreign land. We can already tell you that the results fully met and even exceeded expectations. Nevertheless, the conditions at the border of our solar system turned out to be very different from what we had expected. The measurement results showed a sudden increase in the density of the environment. For Voyager 1, crossing the boundary of the solar system almost felt like flying into a wall. This was a fantastic surprise, as researchers had previously thought that the heliopause ended very gently and that the transition to the interstellar medium was smooth. But apparently, a kind of wall is building up at the boundaries of the solar system, caused by the pressure of interstellar space on the heliosphere. This wall probably serves to protect our solar system. Although the interstellar medium is an exciting field of research, it would be extremely dangerous for us Earthlings due to the high levels of radiation. Our sun wraps us in a protective mantle of particle streams, preventing us from being hit by the radiation of interstellar space. Let's travel to the distant future for a moment and imagine a manned spaceship flying over this threshold. A spaceship with a conventional propulsion system would feel a noticeable jolt at this threshold. In free space, a spaceship would then encounter completely different physical conditions than in the interior of the solar system. The challenges would be dealing with more intense cosmic radiation and navigating in a less familiar medium. However, Voyager 1 has not become significantly faster despite the greatly changed environment and the far lower particle density in interstellar space. This shows that this space is not really empty. Something is still offering sufficient resistance to prevent the probe from accelerating infinitely. We know very little about this space so far. Basically, the measurement data from Voyager 1 and 2 are the first reliable indications from this area of the universe. Signals from an unknown force? Let me now unravel the mystery of what strange signals Voyager 1 received and why these could be indications of a mysterious object in interstellar space. Voyager 1 is equipped with numerous instruments for determining particle currents, electromagnetic fields, and other cosmic phenomena. The magnetometer measures the strength and direction of the magnetic field in space. This enables the probe to detect magnetic anomalies, which further indicate the presence of objects or even artificial structures. The plasma wave subsystem detects electromagnetic waves in the plasma of the interstellar medium. Unusual patterns or signals in these waves could indicate the activities or communication of an alien intelligence. As the name suggests, the ultraviolet spectrometer measures ultraviolet radiation, which is emitted by stars and other celestial bodies in space. Unexpected UV radiation could also indicate artificial sources or unusual astronomical phenomena. Voyager 1 uses the infrared interferometer spectrometer to determine the thermal composition and possible heat sources in interstellar space. Voyager 1 suddenly detected a strange stream where scientists had not expected to find any particle streams, which some scientists interpreted as a measurement error, but others had a completely different idea. An unusual stream of particles in the interstellar medium could indicate the presence of an object. Many objects emit particles of varying strength, 
or the stream could have originated from a previously unknown force operating in interstellar space. Either would be a sensation. We cannot rule out the possibility that there is something out there in the endless space between the stars and galaxies. Since the nearest stars are far away, there is no light in the interstellar medium. Voyager's cameras have long been switched off to save power. Operating them in their current position would also be quite nonsensical, as it's almost certainly pitch black in the vicinity of the probe almost all the time. So, we wouldn't be able to see objects there, but we could detect them through the radiation they emit or other traces they leave behind in space. In addition to interstellar asteroids, even entire planets or planetoids can move through space. It is not at all uncommon for planets to be ejected from their systems and then wander through space until they are attracted to a star. However, unusual radiation could also be an indication of the technology of an advanced intelligence, or it could emanate from a previously unknown elemental force operating in space. Press the subscribe button. There are many more highlights to come.